let's first introduce the uh, whole concept of patterns. Now, we know from the cognition of problem solving that experts do things differently from beginners. Not they do it better, but they do things differently. And this is quite important. There's been a lot of effort spent trying to discover what it is about experts that they do different. Well, there are some answers to that, but they don't necessarily help us. Uh, but among them, uh, we can take some lessons from the work that's being done on um, um, natural, um, what is it called there? Recognition primed uh, decision making or, or naturalistic decision making. This arose out of some work that was uh, done to try and figure out how people make decisions. And what was found was that in um, uh, time critical situations, so if you make, if you're um, fighting a bushfire or um, uh, any any kind of building fire, the person, in, the, the chief, the director of the operations makes decisions based on recognizing what the pattern of events is. So it's not as if they consider all the factors and then decide is that this looks like I'm one of those and here's the kind of thing I do in that circumstance. Now importantly, a pattern only describes an abstraction of what the situation is. The answer is also an abstraction which the person then instantiates into the circumstances. So we have this recognition primed uh, decision making and its equivalent, uh, which is pattern matching. In software development, uh, we had uh, some work in artificial intelligence that went on back in the early 1980s and there it was um, a schema was the um, proposed um, means of storing information about the situation. Now the whole thing of patterns got underway when the work of Christopher Alexander was recognized and, and um, being uniformly hailed as being um, one of the great works of um, building architecture. His book is there, it's The Timeless Way of Building. Now, this arose out of studies into um, how would we how would we ramp up basically how would we ramp up uh, building of homes that come out of um, uh, the work in the Second World War? After all, the servicemen got uh, back from the Second World War. There was a need to build a lot of houses very quickly, and the question was, well, how can we do this? Because prior to that, the um, uh, our houses tend to be built individually. Uh, Christopher Alexander and a group of people investigated this um, by looking at uh, how buildings had been designed in over the world. Right? Were there common themes, common ways of doing things? And they found that yes, they were. They uh, they, they found that the problems tended to fit into some categories, and that um, problems tended to be solved in the same way each time. And so they described this as the timeless way of building. And that book, if you ever read it, is full of um, patterns. If if this if this combination of circumstances holds, here's what you can do. The patterns are a generalized solution to a general problem, all right? recurring problems. So, for example, um, the the picture I've got there is of um, church windows. Each of those windows is different, but each of them conforms to the general pattern of a particular church window. Uh, it happens that the shape of the top is actually called a Tudor, Tudor top. Um, it, it, there is a particular way of drawing that particular top, and all of the stonemasons at the time knew how to do it. But each window could well be different. Um, but the, the problem of how do we build a window such that the whole thing doesn't collapse as soon as we put a wall further up, up uh, on the top of it. That was common. The, the dimensions of the window would vary and the number of window panes would vary, but it was the same kind of a problem. Now a pattern describes a recurring problem that occurs in a given context and based on a set of guiding forces recommends a solution. So we have the, the problem, the situation, some uh, forces and we have a recommended solution. The solution is usually a simple mechanism. It could be a collaboration between a couple of classes or something of that nature, but the, the, the solution in its abstract form is usually quite simple. It's the devil's in the details. You've actually got to apply it to the situation. 
Now, there have been a number of contributors, and I've listed them there. I won't try to read them off because the writing is very small. Um, but famously in software development, the book of, um, what was it there, Designing Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented um, Software by the Gang of Four uh, is a famous book. It, it published 28 recurring patterns of uh, things in object-oriented software, the, the kind of problems that people were solving again and again and again. And they published the book. It became famous. And in turn, it introduced this concept of patterns, and as I say, the rest is history. This was followed by, um, is it Bushman's, uh, Bushman et al., uh, their book um, on architectural patterns. So where the Gang of Four book dealt with programming patterns, and this one dealt with uh, architectural patterns at a higher level of abstraction. And there are uh, books, there have been books written since then. Uh, there is also, uh, notably, the Patton, the Portland Patent Repository, um, and you find that on the website there. Um, Microsoft has a repository of patents, as does uh, Java J2EE has a repository of patents, and uh, there are other sources. But there's there's a lot of information available. Now each pattern to conform to the requirements of describing a pattern has got four elements. The first is a name. Now the name tends to be fairly descriptive. I mean, this is, this is like um, some native names, you know, dances with wolves or something like that. You know. um, the, uh, the one I can think of is uh, a singleton. Now a singleton is um, a fairly well-known concept and it describes the pattern. In uh, architecture, we have pipes and filters, we have blackboard, we have um, uh, model view controller, um, action domain responder, we have uh, microkernel, we have a layer, we have um, uh, can't think of the other one. We'll get to them later. But there are names. Each pattern has a name. Each pattern describes the problem. Um, the, the problem description has got to be fairly su succinct. It explains the problem in its context um, and explains what about the context contributes to the problem. There's no good describing you know, pages and pages of context that don't bear on the particular problem. Um, what we're interested in is, is what actually is contributing to the problem. Um, the solution, we'll describe the solution to that particular problem in the abstract. Now it is up to the person who is using the pattern to adapt it and instantiate it in the circumstance. And there are recorded the consequences because patterns don't offer a solution to the problem, they offer a way to change it from one problem to another problem. Now one problem could be fairly intractable but the other problems that you're changing it to could be tractable in the circumstances or could be insignificant or manageable. But we don't say that a, a pattern offers a solution. It doesn't. It simply changes the situation. Patterns do come in a variety of abstractions. There are patterns at the very high level, where you might be talking about a pattern that applies to a collection of systems. Um, you could be talking about a pattern that applies to a collection of subsystems making up a system, or a collection of components within each subsystem, or a collection of programs within each, each component. But there are different levels of abstraction. They tend not to mix the levels of abstraction up. You tend not to find a pattern that deals with um, trying to mix up a, a, a program with a collection of components. It just is not a useful thing to do. But patterns, so far as uh, this particular um, course is concerned, can be grouped into architectural patterns, design patterns, and idioms. Architectural patterns apply to the overall architecture of the um, subsystems and the components, the overall um, set out of the thing. The design patterns deal with specific um, circumstances or specific, uh, yeah, circumstances will do. Um, within the architecture, so they're not entitled. They're not trying to be an all-encompassing. They are simply something that fits in a little little space. There are things either side of it. So that's a design pattern. An idiom is um, just an interpretation. I 
I don't uh, deal with idioms in this course. Different vendors, when, when I went looking at them, uh, different vendors uh, have a different view of how patterns ought to be collected together. So Microsoft has its patent repository and you know, it's, it's very public and it's great of them and you are encouraged to go and have a look at it. Same as J2EE has a, a patent repository and again it's public and again you are encouraged to have a look at it and there are patents incorporated in IBM's uh, Rational Rose um, software architecture tool. I haven't made a study of that particular collection of patents, but I know that the classification in the Microsoft repository is different from the classification in the J2EE repository. It, uh, J2EE separates things into patents in the presentation tier, in the business tier, and the integration tier. Microsoft splits up the patents as uh, in terms of application type, guidance type, platform and developer tool version, and quality attribute. So there's a different different classification for them. So a summary. Um, patterns describe a recurring problem that occurs in a given context and uh, a, the, its guiding forces and a recommended solution. So that's a pattern. It has four essential elements, a name, a description of the problem, a description of the solution, and a description of the consequences. Patterns have been used in software architecture and programming quite successfully. They are one of the more successful ways of trying to preserve or capture and preserve the wisdom of experts and transmit it to less expert. Um, this is as opposed to simply talking to you for a long time and hoping you'll pick, pick it all up.